All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, well, welcome back. We are going to continue on uh, through the budget here. I have um, done a. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to. We're going to kind of skip around here. We're going to do one more under item number four. That's going to be the aquatic center, and that's. And then we're going to move on to uh, number five, which is uh, sewer utility. And then we will probably call it a night after that and uh, move on to some of these other uh, items in, a, in another meeting. Um, we're already at nine o'clock and we're maybe halfway through this one section. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so that being said, uh, Patrick is still up there. He stood there the whole time during the break. And we have uh, Aquatic Center. Uh, do you have anything we can um, kick it off? Yeah, I mean, Amy Jo knows it up and down, so probably we'll bring her up in a minute. But just to reiterate what I said at the outset, uh, you know, we've we've had to address you know equipment issues and things quite a bit recently because of an aged facility, but. Um, Thankfully, with the support of the council, we've been able to address some things. Um, we've had some unexpected things happen um, with with some of the mechanicals uh, that are being addressed. Uh, but on the on the flip side, it seems like the energy and the <clears throat> support for the the aquatic center isn't hasn't been higher. Um, so we're really happy with that. Um, got a great team there. Um, you know, we were able to come up and show off some uh, awards recently just with uh, safety and, and how they work with the staff. So um, that that's just, that's great. Um, with that, uh, we, we do show a little bit of an increase in the levy for the Aquatic Center, uh, just again to address the ongoing maintenance issues of a facility that's, I don't even know how, Old, getting to be over 15 years old. Oh, it's like 821. Are we getting that high? No. It's no. 18. 18. Yeah. 18. 18 years. 2005. 19 years. <clears throat> Open 18 years. Yeah. 2001, they actually opened the doors. All right. Okay. It's seen its years. Let's just yes, put it that it point. <laughs> um, but we're committed to it, and uh, it's something that uh, the community. Uh, takes uh, advantage of and enjoys so um, I don't know if you want to say anything I have Joe? Questions. unless there's questions I have, have questions. questions yeah no no I have a question I was just raising my hand um, I, I guess I just would like a little bit of uh, information on where we are uh, the tax subsidy subsidy in 2016 uh, to today, you know, over three years, it's gone up over forty-two thousand um, dollars. Yeah, that that's more Patrick. Okay, well, yeah. that one. Thank you. Sorry. I uh, to be to be honest, I think uh, when I first started, it seemed like they the allocation to the aquatic center was never enough to to realistically address what it took to operate the center. And what it ended up is there'd be shortfalls falls, and the city would have to fill those at the end of the year. So the trends address more true costs in the, in the last few years. And that's reflected in, in, in what we're seeing since 2016 on your sheet anyway. Um, we'd like to see that trend reverse um, but I think that's also tied again to just the maintenance issues and uh, you know dressing the 18 year old pool. Okay, no, that's uh, good to know. I was um, the, I, I do recall when, my, when I at 2016 when I first was on council, there was a, a deficit. Yeah. So this is you know this is really a budget correction for what we're really spending, what it takes to operate it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We're paying for it one way or the other. Just now we're budgeting <coughs> appropriately for it. Okay. 
And I really think, you know, as, as I mentioned in the, the beginning, we're identifying things that can be strategic, um, addressing, you know, how the community wants to use the facility with the hours and, and being open and utilizing the staff that we need to, to function. So fortunately, I think this year was a very favorable weather-wise. Um, sometimes we run into those wets or cold summers and there's not much we can do about that. But um, just the, the last couple of years though, we've seen some real, real positives. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. we have. I think. Yeah, and I've and I've noticed that there's, you know, your your miscellaneous revenue and you know your your selling things there, you know, which always helps. So, and I've noticed that go up, and that's always a good oh, thing. Oh yeah, we're doing really well with concessions. I think that's because we're offering healthy choices too. It makes a big difference to families. Yeah, Mike. One question on the revenue is: It looks like our punch passes and gift certificates weren't really budgeted for this year are you just putting that into daily admissions and that's how, how that's how it's calculated because a 10 punch pass is really a one daily admission 10 times so we're just rolling that into daily admissions okay makes sense rather than tracking it separately but I, we I think we decided that we're actually going to log the number that we sell We'll keep track of that so we actually know how many we sell every year. But it's actually the, the revenue goes to the um, daily missions. Okay. I see that um, the memberships <clears throat> for both family and individual have gone down. Correct. Um, have the rates increased to a point where we're seeing a decline? We haven't raised our rates in many years. I would say five yeah at least at least five years demographics is kind of what we always accounted to because families change i mean i used to buy a family membership it went down to two individuals and then my daughter carly got an individual and last year she got a couple passes two 10 punch passes it's just as kids get older they don't go as much or they go you know so we chose to keep the revenue line item the same as hopes of new families coming into town that we can um, generate more revenue that way we actually open later, closed earlier, but the open later. I mean, those things kind of come into factor. We open later because we had the, the leak with the pipes mm -hmm. and the walls. Yeah, and even with that, you were, I mean, you are right on. I mean, pretty darn close. I would think so. You probably would have surpassed 2017 mm -hmm. had that not happened so. we'll never know right <laughs> uh, there's a couple hot days there at the end where you where weren't open i would have come i told patrick i sold two 10 punch passes today for christmas presents so oh. we're already making money <laughs> someone should tell my wife my ninety dollars tomorrow to ninety dollars <laughs> that'd be a great idea i never thought of that anyway any questions on any of the expenses? There were some changes on those, but.
Sorry, Amy Jo. I was looking for something that I thought was in this packet, but maybe it's not. And an expense? Yeah. Okay. Under expense. Um, Kim, wasn't did I am I missing wasn't there a breakdown of what all what all the um the uh maintenance and stuff that were uh what's it like the pool repair maintenance, the equipment maintenance, um and supplies and mm. operating I, expenses. Wasn't there a I summary? have it. Do you want it? Um it's probably in here maybe, but Yeah, because I'm what I'm seeing here is a. <laughs> so it's 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 covering over it's covering three different budget lines. Yeah, there it is. What page is that? Doesn't have page number. Um, Where does the money go? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I got it. Thanks, guys. Should just go down the three that I have. This is what I have. This is what. So the VGB grates are state mandated. They have to be replaced every 10 years. Uh, last year when we opened up the drain in the, by the body slide, that one was replaced and there's four in the deep end. And those need to be replaced. Those are $2,200 for the four of those. And we're requesting to replace three lane lines at $500 each. And those are original to the pool being built. Um, no, nope, I'm. I don't have. You're good. Okay. Yeah, I, don't, I cool. just didn't. I wanted. That's what I needed to see. All right. So if you can continue if anybody else has questions on it, but I don't. Be happy to answer any questions. At least that on that. So a Schedule 80 pipe is a much thicker pipe, and it actually, the water can go through there a lot faster at gallons per minute. Right now we have Schedule 40, which means that the wear and tear it's getting very thin. We can't weld it any longer. We there is no more room to cut and put collars so they're going to rip out that whole wall and put in brand new Schedule 80 pipe. Which is a good thing because it gives us more room because they're also removing the liquid chlorine lines that were in there when they originally had liquid chlorine. Um, I, I will let you know that Jenny and I did meet another plumber out there. We did get another quote and he said mine would be three times as much. Carico said we could be in and out in two days. That's what they do. So. Um, Okay. Any questions for Amy Jo on the uh, Aquatic Center? I have one, just for clarification. Mm -hmm. Under expenses, uh, I can't tell which item. Supplies and operating expenses has gone up from eighty or let's see, eighty-seven hundred to seventeen thousand, and that's got the firewall, filter baskets, and test kit. I know about all that stuff, but it says four computers. Four computers. Four computers. That is correct. Um, this year we had two computers that died on us, and then council did approve. We put one in there. Kane's computer also, the, excuse me, the one in the concession stand stopped working, so we took Kane's office computer and put it in the concession stand. So there are three, four more computers we'd have to replace Canes, which is what he schedules swim team meets and swimming lessons and prepares all that and then the scanner for the active net cards and then the concession stand the other two at the front desk so that's which one was replaced this year then the front counter f1, f1. <laughs> the very first one that's a windows 10 so there's one two more at the front desk Kane's office and the concession stand okay thanks mm -hmm. More questions for Amy Joe? All right, thanks, Amy Joe. Yep, thank you. Okay. 
So what I would like to do then is uh, kind of pause on item number four um, on the workshop session. Uh, we've gotten quite a ways through this, and I, and I, I do think that we could probably hammer out the rest of it um, pretty fairly quickly, but there are some lingering things that I think have to be resolved with other committees or other commissions before uh, we look at them anyway. So I think uh, I'll move on to uh, number five, which is the which was changed from number six to number five. Discussion of the 2019 proposed sewer utility budget. Um, so now we're acting as the sewer board not the city council essentially well we are the same but anyway how are you um that's where i stopped off on uh, the powerpoint here Good night. and thanks for everyone coming in and staff there except for we saved the we saved the best for last john <laughs> All right, um, Patrick, you got the slide up? Yep. Okay, so continuing on, I added a few uh, highlights and items related to the sewer utility. Um, sewers steady eddy, I think, in terms of operating. I mean, you all know that um, equipment and facilities and capital type items are always at the forefront with the sewer we often come with Dave Arnott and everything and things we need to take care of which we have um, but in terms of you know how we manage things uh, John takes care of things very well with his two guys Ryan and Kevin um, and that that I think it reflects you know just a, a commitment over maintaining what we have the collection system maintenance uh, we embarking on the the uh, maintenance on the mains and using technologies to not have to dig up roads to address mains and that's really uh, improved what we have but as I just said you know the facility all always needs attention so we raise uh, a need in the roof area um, roof the year of the roof I think we're calling 2018 anyway <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, sewer doesn't uh, escape that um, so John's gotten a couple of of quotes and things we'll be looking for in uh, 2019 to address that um, and if we have specific questions we can get into that um, filter cell budget uh, repaint the fil filter cells is a is a aim to do uh, often talk about the phosphorus removal um, and we're making progress with that I had a productive meeting with the Wisconsin Academy last week and they're interested in doing the conservation efforts to do the water quality training and they're such a big uh, a big uh, agricultural outfit that's close to the um, to the tributaries in the crawfish river i think we're going to be able to really take advantage of that relationship if we can make it work um revenue bonds causing an increase in their debt service there uh, replacement funds we're committed to keeping our replacement funds uh at a, at a level where we can utilize them um the the rate increase last year was important and uh, we want to keep that our, our tabs on that as much as we can uh, we would have another study this year correct Kim on our rates in 19 yeah uh, wastewater treatment plant two smaller projects the boiler system uh, replacing grates um, Huber screen is pending that's a big ticket item that we keep to d studying and uh, discussing because there seems to be just a, a, a lot of 
options and unknowns that could really bear on what the final cost could be there. So that is, is down the road yet for us, but probably closer than, closer. yeah, right, right. Okay. Right. But the, the good news is from an, an initial uh, cost estimates, it's quite a bit lower than, than what we had hoped. But now the, the trend is, is heading the other way, but not nearly as bad. So <coughs> no changes for vehicles. Uh, we're looking at the future replacement of the Vactor, which is used daily. Um, and we're able to actually that allows us to even uh, um, use it out. Uh, Fall River calls on us to use it, Elba, whenever is needed, so it's a revenue source also. Pumps and motors, uh, 2020 are, are set aside. Uh, amongst all our funds, you know, we do have a very detailed and uh, consistent review of the capital improvement plan, the seven-year plan for the sewer and uh, when we have to follow through on those things we always come forward to the council so that will take next time So um, <clears throat> page 43, the maintenance repairs non-capital. Uh, it looks like it says you're carrying over 75,000 to 2019. Now is that 75,000 plus the 95,000 or is that total? Because you did it differently in the, uh, you would list only what you would have listed 20,000 here like you did. So it's different. It's a little confusing. Okay. It should be Okay. And okay. Uh, that is uh, the third. Oh, uh, page forty-three. Every page is forty-three. I noticed. I oh, whoops. That's the third page back. Under collection. Didn't we just talk about that at the last council meeting that we were carrying those funds over to do kind of two years of work in one year or okay? Yeah. And it and actually one of the things um, because they've gone through the basins, you know, they televised one basin or one section in one year. The following year they look back and they do the repair while they're televising the next one and they just continually go around the city. Well they, we've done that now for a couple of cycles. And what John had suggested when we met on budget was that instead of doing full maintenance, that we actually step back and actually get all of that documented, probably on GIS, so that what we've done is already accounted for, so that we can move forward a little bit more efficiently. Otherwise, we're just continuing to go over and over and over the same things. This way, we can get it all documented, updated, and then look at it again next year, or 2020. So instead of reevaluating new infrastructure, just keep an eye on the older stuff that we know is aging. Um, instead of evaluating the entire collection system every year, is that what you're getting at, John? Right. Okay. We were we were finding ourselves going over the same pipe, and we knew maybe the condition. There's new technologies out there where we can maybe assess a third of the city and apply that to our GIS. So we'll do an assessment and an inventory of sorts, and have a bet. Then we can take a little step back and reevaluate and. We're better to spend our resources to 
you know, improve the system even more. But we just felt we were just chasing our tails, so to speak, not really make using really efficient use of the funds. So. Sure, that makes sense. Taking a little step back. And I'm sure it was done different years ago when we had to hire out someone to come in and televise, you know, one basin at a time. Now we've got our own. Yeah, initially, cameras, maybe so. 10 years ago when we started this, we were just dotting around. We were just, we found a problem here. We were just putting out fires, so to speak. Yeah. And now we had a more evaluated the system more systematically. Now we're to that point again where we're, there's new technologies that we can assess it again, you know, make it even more efficient when we do do the repairs. Makes sense. What is the uh, what is the push camera? We've been finding too, and since we own a portion of the lateral, that we need to have access to that and evaluate some possible breaks in, in our portion of the laterals. Um, it, it's either, we're looking at a push camera, we have to access homes, so we're not really sure if that's the best alternative, but um, right now it, it probably is. But we just, we find ourselves having to look for those problems and we, that's probably the easiest way to find them, other than you're just kind of guessing where a problem might be, this way we can really evaluate it. And, pinpoint right where the problem might exist. It's something we had in the past. The camera became obsolete. Um, we didn't own any of the laterals any longer. Now we're back to owning them again. So it, it helps us find pinpoint problems in the system. Um, same page as the 95. It's actually just a small camera that you just push down the pipes. And it's as simple as that, I guess. Okay. Exactly what it says, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I thought. Mm What's the current stage of the sludge management issue? I know we've talked about that pretty much every year I've been here. Yeah, and I think about it all the time. We, at, especially at different times of year, this time of year in particular, we try to get as much out of it as we can. We're pushing the limits maybe of our storage facility, but we have discussions with um, our con Dave Arnott, our consultant with Rupert Milky, uh, just to, and that's coming up in another, I think in 2020. Um, there's different we have discussions about that all the time but I think it's it's probably timed perfectly in our CIP that at that point we'll be pushing the limits to the, of our building and need to needing to expand that but either expand the storage or figure out a way to make it drier so we can s store less but dry it more have you had to rely this year at all on, on getting it out of there and, and you know taking it somewhere else or no, we it? haven't we're pretty fortunate that there's a dairy farmer that still grows wheat and oats for his bedding so we have acreage available in the summer in the winter leading into spring it's a lot more difficult that at those times um, we try to operate the plant a little differently to maybe not have as much sludge in the spring but then the weather really dictates that this year it, it was hard to get out there's a small window to get out but we have a contract in place an agreement of sorts with um, United Liquid Waste they have cake storage capabilities that we it's kind of we try not to use that but in, in you know or, or if our truck breaks down or other circumstances dictate that okay but the, the budget reflection of the 10,000 is kind of in the event of an emergency or that we have to turn to those other alternatives because it looks like we've only expended about or projected to only spend $3,500 but activity through the third quarter is only $388 so the $10,000 is more kind of set in place kind if we get into trouble. Kind of an, an insurance policy okay. of sorts if we do okay. get into trouble. Okay, good. But we're pretty fortunate now that we have that wheat field that we go on in the summer otherwise I think we'd be using that more often. Okay. <clears throat> More 
questions for John? Just want to make a quick comment too that just to highlight um, the the advent of the clay lateral program too. I think is uh, something I think is going to be good as it grows. I mean, we've had some take advantage during the street project, but um, John and Dave, you know, uh, have identified. You know, we're we're dealing with the the basins and the mains and, and shoring those up. But the next level is really to zone in on the clay laterals and make sure you're limiting the I and I. So the as we work to develop that further, you know, we're going to address that area and even improve, you know, our ability to to control that and it, it all has that positive effect on the plant. Yeah. Put 7,200 in there this year for, for 2019. And yeah. I can't remember where we landed on, on this program as far as outside of city street projects. We're, we are prepping a more detailed and formal po uh, policy program for you to look at that would take what we've learned from the street project and then apply it to make it more of a long-term thing. So you'll be seeing that. Okay. Mayor Tull? I, how did you come up with the $7,200? I guess what is that number based on for for the budget for the clay lateral uh, program? It was just based on four homes. Okay. I mean, I don't. We haven't been talking about any local street projects for next year, uh, but I guess as we talk about the policy moving forward, I think there was some discussion about including homes that had significant lateral issues that we wanted to get rid of with an old clay lateral outside of those projects. So, I mean, I, I guess since that's coming from uh, the connection fees, I think when we talked about it this year, we were at first talking about $30,000 kind of to cover the project and then maybe others outside of it. So yeah, I think if we get to the point where we run into some issues, we can revisit that when needed. But yeah. I'm glad it's, it's a line item at this point anyway, which is good. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> One more question. Yeah. Did you take into account the rate adjustments that were made for uh, our customers? Yeah. Okay. And we haven't gone through a full year of that yet. Okay. Every time we get our payment from water and light, we do an analysis of where we are. Okay. And what it'll look like at the end of the year, and then I use that to go forward and the budget. Okay. Anything else for on sewer? Good. I'm good. Okay. Oh, custodial services? I did not check. You mean? <laughs> John, John, you do that? And he does get retirement too. Well, that's good. <laughs> I had to go back and check now. Um, all right, so I, I don't know what the will of the council is as far as next steps here. Um, I think it, the discussion on the capital projects budget is going to be a very lengthy conversation. You don't think so? Well, Kim? At this moment in time, we don't have anything in the budget year but there am I on? there are thank you Jesse there you know are obviously some outstanding things that the council would have to discuss right there there are it's, it's not as big as like last year where we had like a dozen things to get through 
but there there are projects we'd like to discuss and in alternative funding and strategies potentially for some of them right so I guess what I'm getting at is we probably don't want to tackle that tonight do we I mean it's I, I don't I don't want to tackle it but I think we should talk about it for five minutes because I think if we're gonna call something a capital budget and I guess for me anyway is <laughs> that's where the levied dollars are usually separated from the special projects or, or sometimes they're not um, but identifying the finances that are available for capital projects I think if we can lay that out in dollars and cents kind of gives us some boundaries to work in to consider things that that staff has brought forward I know that there's a possibility of maybe a bucket truck and a few other things but when we're talking about like the bike path improvements and things like that it looks like everything's included in the levy dollars at this point including the police car it's that's with carried over funds yeah, yeah. so it would be levy dollars from this year you're right when we had the discussion though when we when we uh, gave Dennis the go-ahead to do it I we went out to keep that flexibility because we didn't know what position we were going to be in during the budget mm -hmm. as far as how we were going to finance it and I'm right. you know not disagreeing with the approach we're taking right now but if you change the way that you finance some of those things you can have more funding for some capital projects too right. so I think um, just kind of having more of a layout for our next meeting yeah. for possible projects yeah and I think the recycling center is going to be one of those things where we have intentions but we don't know what things cost yet to be able to commit some funding to that would help yeah yeah and there's you know the pot of money that's in the uh, asset disposal um, you and I talked about you know where are we at with unused bonding funds and I have asked Kim to look into that some of that will be affected by the RFP on the facility study but there could be some sources there so that's why I said you know I think there's some ways to get to accomplish some things in capital projects um, but we need to clarify some of that and even if it is you know recommitting for the, the study I mean we talked about the study a year ago really and we've identified using those unused bond proceeds to kind of just go through that checklist and make, make sure that yeah. we're committing funding to things that we've already committed to since the, the planning studies not happened yet we're, but right. we're still in the process but just a good practice to kind of go through it and look at what we have available yeah. for those so okay well if uh, the council's okay with it I I'm, I'm okay with uh, uh, like intro to capital projects budget good and see where it takes us sure good plus you know we've got we want to incorporate some of the discussions and changes we've talked about tonight um, and that we had change since the initial budget was shared so we'll get yeah. you those copies too sure. <clears throat> right. well go who wants to, who wants to go do you have a powerpoint for the capital projects or not yes we you do. do oh yeah <laughs> or he does i should say <laughs> so right uh project activity for 19 we final payment on lease for the 2014 squad uh, and an engineering contribution for 89 um, as that project continues they are looking for you those are primary utility costs in the design for the utilities for that roadway um, as we just said we identified some projects here below that we want to look at look at potential revenue sources or maybe even adjustments to what we have included in the current budget to uh, accomplish those things so the senior center roof replacement something we know about we've talked about I don't know that it's imminent but it's looming um, I want to talk about uh, the stormwater run runoff from the police department something I've talked about with neighbors there that's that's an issue um, <clears throat> just you know what what is our responsibilities there um, Dennis talked about the building repairs the stucco that's what that is uh, public works and water and light water and lights looking at a new bucket truck and they have a current used bucket truck that could benefit the operations at public works um, I'm you know where that lies on the priority list I don't know but it should be something that we ought to throw out and discuss and then the recycling center do 
See, that was fast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, questions, conversation? What do you, I mean, do you want to talk about these or do we, I mean, I guess I'm looking for some direction from council. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. All right. Well, thank you for the intro to that. Well, uh, you have some more information to give us, I've, I've heard. Um, I'm assuming you're going to pass that out before we leave. And so next up, then, we'll look at uh, we have action or schedule additional meetings for 2019 city budget. I think it's become clear that we need a few more meetings the very least um, so I know there's been some emails going around about some meeting potential date you know potential meeting dates uh, I don't know where we, where we're at with Thursday there was that was brought up uh, I don't know if we're gonna have a quorum or not I've not heard so I'd be interested to hear what the plan is yeah what we had initially thought was uh, depending on what happened tonight we could spill some over and talk about what we needed to um, I you know with members maybe not being here I'm not sure if we want to try to tackle Thursday I mean, well I think you could just <laughs> pull the room so Kosh is not available Thursday I won't know if I can be here Thursday till tomorrow. I'm waiting to hear about my camper. How does, how, do people know offhand what their schedules are like for next week? Obviously Monday is. And Tuesday is election day. Tuesday so. is election day, but. Um, The thing is, is we're running we're running out of time. I mean, we're we're starting this process later. I feel than we have before, um, which is fine. It's just gonna we're gonna have to make it up. So when's our when do we need to have this finalized, Kim? November twentieth. And well, we have to have the. Is that that's not the regular meeting, right? That is the right. That, I've lost. That's the, the, the oh, yeah, reason. 6, 20, that's yeah. the public hearing date. Eleven twenty. And that's to hear public comment on the budget. But it really could, if you didn't want to make a decision on the budget at that time, what we've done in the past is either had a meeting that following Tuesday, or held it off to the first meeting in December for a final decision on the budget. Well, when do you have to have your numbers in to the to the state? To the county. county. County, sorry. I well, state law requires that I have tax bills in everybody's hands by the second Monday in December. Okay. So, so that's worst case of, scenario, we have to have this hammered out by December on by December fourth and a final vote by that day. Yeah. And we've done that in the past, and and, yeah. and, and, and it, it, well, it does fine. sound like a tall order. It, it it can be done that way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, and and I think you. The rest of the budgets, a lot of them are very small budgets, like the revolving loan fund really truly is just the payments that we get in and small activity like the audits fee that yeah. we do. Or, you know, like the solid waste is one that the, I don't, I'm not going to suggest any changes from the fee that we had this year to 2019 because basically we don't need to increase it. Um, so that, I mean, some of those smaller funds really will go very quickly. It's going to be 
like capital projects is probably going to be one that will take a little bit of time to get through and probably the CDA as well I imagine there'll be a little more discussion there and we have um, some RFPs to consider yeah the audit RFP really is a critical one because normally by the first week in December they're already here doing preliminary work for the audit so if we're going to have a say we don't go with Baker Tilly and we go with a new firm obviously they've got some learning curves I don't want to get too far behind because for me once we approve the budget and those tax bills come out it's the office gets really crazy on top of trying to prepare for audits you're also dealing with tax collections and everything that goes along with that so it it can be you know what I mean it just gets really cluttered and so would you see that as a, uh, an additional meeting and not piling it on top of what we have left to do with the budget? Because I feel like we almost need to do the RFP. Don't you need that to I, even finish that part of the budget? I, that would be nice, yeah. And then so we could do the RFP meeting, an ad hoc meeting, and then do... Would, could we do Thursday as the RFP meeting if that's the only thing we do? If we can get four people here. Clark, Trina. I might be running late. Well, we, with time six thirty, we don't have to do it at six. Right. Yeah, we certainly can be flexible. Yeah, I was going to say this Thursday I can make it at six thirty because they have soccer till six. And and really the goal there is just to review the bids and select right. a and. Well, you know, the big thing is knowing what you want to do after you've looked at the bids. Do you want to interview like the top two candidates? Or at least meet them, or I mean, I we I guess we kind of need some directive from you all on what your next step, what you'd like to see as your next step for those bids, and that bid process. So maybe that's something to kind of keep in the yeah, back of your your mind too. Well, I mean, Thursday is probably going to be fine for me, so I think we should. I think we need to get that done. Okay. And then we sh we need to to work on the rest of the budget. And I don't really know if it's the best idea to do those both at the same time. So as much as I like <coughs> fewer meetings, it's already almost ten o'clock, and you know yeah. I could see this happening again. If I could ask if we're um, meeting Thursday for those that'll be there, just look at your calendars, and we'll hammer out at least one, or even set aside a second meeting for the budget put that on the agenda yeah okay determine next meeting for budget yeah if that's okay Mike yeah I think if you can meet as an ad hoc you're gonna make a recommendation we need a recommendation for our next council meeting I'm assuming if we're going to select yeah someone differently but you can have that discussion I mean you can also have I don't know if there are um, references in each presentation from from the vendors or if we need to have interviews with anybody, but I mean, technically, they're all doing the same. They're providing the same service, which is outlined by mm -hmm. state and federal statutes. There's not a lot of wiggle room there. Yeah, there's just some nuances in the proposals that would, you know, you may value over others. Sure. You know, when you get beyond their their uh, proposal, you know, their bid. So okay. And Kim, have you had time to review those? Yeah, and, and you'll will you be coming with a proposal with a recommendation? You don't have to say it, the recommendation, but do you have, have a plan to do so? I have a couple of ones that I, I think we can weed out right away. Okay. Because either they're, you know, out of, you know, from a cost wise or just out there, okay. or they don't provide all the services that the city's looking for. But there are um, two or three of them that are very, very strong. And, you know, I, I think it's well worth everyone's time to just take a look at those and just read through them um, sure so would you be when you're talking about interviewing them would you want them to come in on Thursday night or you want them after that meeting I would to come into the City Council meeting if we narrowed it down to two or something all right I, I don't I'm trying I guess, to figure I guess out what it, you're trying to get at. well no I, I it's more from a standpoint is what are you all comfortable with you know, if we go through the meeting Thursday night and, you know, we're talking and we really feel like, okay, we've really narrowed it down to these two, but we're not making a final decision. We're going to make the recommendation 
to the next cow meeting, you know, how do you want to make that recommendation? Do you want to invite them in to at least meet and greet and kind of talk to each of you, to talk to the council, okay. or just make the decision and make the recommendation? All right. Let's uh, let's talk about that on Thursday. Thursday. Night. Okay. So we don't need to. Mike, go ahead. I agree with Kim though that if you if you want to if if you feel strongly enough to recommend somebody. I would be okay with that coming to the regular council meeting if there's a quorum of, but if you're not sure, make sure that it goes to the cow. So you have to figure out your timeline yeah. there on how long we have and to get it done. Agree. Okay. So we'll do the ad hoc meeting um, Thursday with all that can attend. I think it, it sounds like we have a quorum start at 630. Um, Patrick just send something out tomorrow to yep. when everyone's at their ha, has all their tools in front of them to make sure that is for sure an okay yep. date and time. And then uh, uh, on that meeting, we will decide when the next budget meeting is and go from there. Great. Right. Um, I'd like to thank staff for coming in and presenting their uh, information night and, and answering the questions we had is appreciated and um we will uh let's see anybody has something else we can adjourn mike go ahead since i won't be here on thursday um you know i guess we'll hopefully schedule something for maybe next week to continue with the budget conversation um which we'll pick up where we left off at i'm assuming yes but the other thing that i think we need to include in the meeting is closed session for uh wage adjustment yeah I um, and that. also i think if we're working on the capital projects if we can decipher if there are any capital projects or potential capital projects that required levying or not, we can separate the capital project discussion off and then we don't have to worry about including it in with the budget timeline, so to speak. It gives us a little bit more flexibility to continue those items. Um, just get the, the general budget stuff done. And okay. so. All right. Anything else from anybody up here? All right, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion and second. All in favor to adjourn, say aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. You have a good night.